The renowned pilgrimage site of Haridwar is located in Uttar Pradesh, 200 kilometers north of New Delhi, on the bank of India's holiest river, the Ganges. Here, Mother Ganga, as she is called, ends her rapid and turbulent course down the Himalayan mountains, of which Haridwa represents the gateway. Literally, the Sanskrit word Dwar means door, and Hari refers to God. Shaivites prefer to say Haridwar, Ha referring then to Lord Shiva, an expansion of the Supreme. In either case, the place has been glorified as the official entrance for all yogis and sages on the path of perfection. Here begins the thickest layer of foothills which is to be crossed through by mystics and devotees before they escalate the highest mountain peaks of the Earth planet. Here begins the stairway to heavenly regions, and higher still, it leads the deserving souls of this world back to Godhead. The natural beauty of surrounding landscapes is there to enhance the ambient religious atmosphere of Haridwar into which the pilgrim is quickly uplifted. One becomes aloof from temporal life. That's a chant all Westerners are familiar with by now the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And that was the universal, timeless Omkara syllable uttered by a Vaishnava yogi. In the great epic Mahabharata, the sage Loma Sharishi tells King Yudhisthira that Lord Shiva received the celestial flow of the Ganges in his lock of hair at this very spot. From Haridwar, Ganga then bounced off to the Himalayas, where from she flowed down to please King Bhagirat and save the 60,000 sons of King Sagar. As described in Srimad Bhagavatam, Haridwar is also the Tirtha where the sinful Ajamil finally retired to attain the highest liberation. And again, it is here at Kankal that Prajapati Daksha, the son of Brahma, had his kingdom's capital city. His daughter Sati Devi, Lord Shiva's dear wife, set herself ablaze due to Daksha's offense at her faultless husband. Many more Puranic accounts are there, which have made Haridwar a famous Tirtha with its year-round flow of pious visitors. And yet, these facts are not what gave Haridwar its preeminence as a holy place of pilgrimage. Once every 12 years, the whole of India's attention becomes focused on Haridwar due to the largest human gathering occurring there. The only other festival in the world to compete with this one is the Kumbha Mela of Prayag. But Haridwar's Kumbha Mela is in just a few days, awaiting close to 10 million pilgrims for a holy bath. On the same day, at the same spot, and for the same purpose. Of course, one may wonder, but why such an event? Well, we must go back in time no less than some millions of years. 
when a great cosmic battle was engaged between the forces of good and evil, referred to in Vedic tradition as demigods and demons. To solve their conflicts, the Supreme Godhead, Lord Vishnu, arranged for them to produce 14 jewels out of a huge ocean of milk. The very last of these gems was the Amrita Kumb, a pitcher filled with divine nectar. But no sooner had it been produced than the jug was snatched away by thieves and hidden for 12 days in 12 different locations until it was again recovered. Of these 12 spots, four were on planet Earth, localized in four Indian cities, Prayag, Haridwar, Ujjain and Nasik. As the nectar was being kept in the 12 places, drops fell from the jug, thus sanctifying the 12 spots. And since the 12 cosmic days of the chase actually equal to 12 earthly years, a tradition started that celebrates the event every 12 years at each one of the four spots. We shall now attend one of these festivals, which are called Kumbh Mela. At Haridwar, the festival period lasts for three months, although more specifically, the 14th of April 1986 is the official Kumbh day. The astrological date when Venus and Jupiter coincide with Aquarius, and when Sun and Moon are on Aries and Sagittarius respectively. A common sight on Hardwa Street during the entire three months of the Kumba period are processions of sadhus and various spiritual groups. Either singing or just playing on music instruments, their purpose is simply to share their religious fervor with everyone. And everyone here happens to be about as disposed as you would ever be in a lifetime to simply celebrate. Regardless of your religious persuasion, God is great, and we're out here to attend the most colossal be-in. Being in touch with God's greatness, of course, these human beings want to remind the whole world just how divine in nature men really are when they unite as a statement of how great God is. Not everyone believes this, when, say, Hare Krishna devotees are seen jumping and singing in downtown New York or Paris. But if you could just imagine a huge fair where dozens of chanting parties like the Hare Krishnas would be swarming all over, it might give you an idea of Haridwar's festive atmosphere today. And yet, the devotees of Krishna are again conspicuous in Haridwar. Why? Because they come from all over the world. Besides the hundreds of ashrams permanently settled in Haridwar, hundreds of visiting religious groups are now camping, thus filling the almost limitless valley space adjoining the city right across the Ganges. Day and night, programs are offered and great spiritual personalities give their valuable association to the common folks. This is actually the prime purpose of the Mela that once every so many years, Mahatmas, sannyasis, sages, yogis and tapasvis come together to give audience to the householders and thirsty aspirants of spiritual life. Such highly realized souls may also share their own realizations and spiritual experiences among themselves or read and discuss from holy scriptures such as Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita in their original Sanskrit text. There is a list of recommendations given to pilgrims and tourists at large in local guidebooks of Haridwar and the Mela. Let us read an excerpt from one of them. In quote, Though Haridwar is filled with all kinds of people, there are a few highly advanced souls. Learned pundits and saints untiringly give their time to clear doubts of aspirants and guide them on the spiritual path. <laughs> 